the right name. Only someone survived. Right. Come with us. Nick. Oh, Nick's here with homicide. He's leading the investigation. What's he doing here? This is not right. What is he doing here? He murdered my son. Yeah, calm yourself. Calm yourself. You'll be under arrest. Oh, police. Matthew Baxter. 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 Matthew Grace. Yeah, let's all hear about Grace, eh? Let's all drink to Grace, yeah, yeah. who's no doubt as good in the sack as she was in the pulpit, eh? Had enough grief son. tonight, Barry. Come on. Grace, out you go. wife of the That's man enough. who murdered my son in Cobra. <gasps> you murdering pig bastard. Hello, Senior Sergeant Croydon. Tony Baxter. Brings you back here. Just want my car back. Your car, I believe, Miss Baxter. Tony Baxter. <laughs> Goodbye, Tony. PJ, feel like a boogie. Yeah, I'm dancing on the inside. <laughs> um, PJ? Sarge? Hold the music. Has the access code been changed? Um, yep. Well, what's the new one? Um... Kelly, I'll handle this. I need my day book. Let me in. You know the protocol. I don't care about protocol. Look, I'd like to help you, but there's no room for discretion, OK? But this is my station. Not at the moment, it isn't. If your suspension's lifted, different story altogether. But until then, you cannot come in. I am not a murderer. Tom, I am not passing judgment. I'm just following the rules. At least until the coronial inquest. Tom, don't make it hard. I'm just doing my job. All right, look, uh, just a general reminder. Senior Sergeant Croydon is not to be admitted to the station under any circumstances, OK? He looked terrible, Sarge. Yeah, well, he's under a lot of pressure. Well, there's no way the boss is a murderer. He just wouldn't do a thing like that. i got some reports to catch up on. Yeah, get those uh, penalty notice figures as soon as you can too, OK? Hey, where are you off to? I'm just taking a bit of personal time, OK? Hey, boss. I'm not your boss, O'Rourke. Well, I just wanted to say I'm really sorry about before. I mean, if it was up to me, I would have let you in. No, I'm not in the mood for small talk. Yeah, all right, well, let's talk about the big stuff then. I want you to know that everyone at the station is on your side. Not everyone. Well, I am. Now, I know you didn't kill anyone. How? Well, you know, cos I just do. Have a joy. And then he closed the door in my face. Oh, you tried. 
Well, he obviously just doesn't want to see anyone just at the moment. Yeah, but I don't get it. He's cut himself off from everyone, yep. even Chris, and you just think you'd have your friends around right now. Well, different people handle things in their own way. I mean, he's been going through hell. Why go through it alone? Who was that? Um, the boss is back. How is it? Not good. No, he's awful. He just looks so sad. I just wanted to give him a big hug. Rather you than me. So how did you guys go? Oh, yeah, good. 143 stolen items from yesterday's burg. And Joss is about to type them all into late. Oh, is that right? Why me? Because you're the probationary constable. That sucks. Oi, where are you going? I'm getting a drink. Is that OK? No, it's not OK. Evan, leave him to me. Look, he just wants to play cops and robbers. Joss? You OK? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, if you've got any paperwork, give it to me. Because hmm? I love it. Paperwork's part of the job. Yeah, well, that's not why I joined the force, is it? So why did you join? To solve crimes, to use my brain. I know they don't even think I've got one, but that's because they don't give me a chance, do they? Well, if you had the chance, where do you see yourself heading? You must have a plan. I mean, everyone needs a plan. I was a senior Connie a month ago, but I really wanted to be a sergeant, so I took the exam and here I am. I mean, OK, I'm only an acting sergeant for now, but one day soon, if I stick to my plan... I want to be a detective. Yeah? Yeah, but don't, don't say anything because I'll think I'm dreaming or something. It's a goal, not a dream. There's a huge difference. You reckon? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a goal's something concrete you can work towards. You can make it happen. Yeah? Yeah, why not? You're a smart guy. <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> You'll just have to show them, won't you? Yeah, but I, I just don't know how to. That's the problem. I mean, I don't want to spend half my lifetime doing bloody paperwork, you know? Well, why don't I do this for you? Yeah? Mm, just this once. Oh, all right. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Lindy. <laughs> yeah. Lindy. Hey. Hey, yourself. So how was your Chrissy? Um, it was uneventful. What about you? Oh, yeah, pretty quiet one. Is it the Strato brief? Yeah, yeah, it is, yep. Can I just grab a copy of that? Mm -hmm. you? All you have to do is ask. Patrick, how are you? Nick! I took a drive by the Brown Owl on my way into town. I couldn't help myself. You know, if I still lived here, I'd be the size of the Michelin Man. Sadly for you, out of jam donuts, so I took the liberty of picking up a vanilla slice. Oh, lovely. Or two. How you been? Oh, you know, too foul. That's Tom. It's just resurfaced. Yeah. Tried to get to the station. Yeah. Haven't seen him for weeks. No messages, no postcards? Right, we're the enemy. Right, we've got another enemy to worry about, mate. That's why I'm here. There you go. You can set your clock by this one. Who is it? Credit Conroy. She's a coroner's assistant. So what's she doing here? Oh, mate, she's got a big job. She's in an old Tom's ass to the wall. I only got the file yesterday. Right. Hello, Greta. Gee, you're all over South Bank, aren't you? Detective Sergeant. What brings you out? Did you hear about the vanilla slice, did you? They're yummy, aren't they? No. Uh. I was just meeting with acting senior Sergeant Jacobs. But yeah, you close the door, please. I'm here to find out if the uh, coroner is wasting valuable time and money on this inquest. <laughs> A bit late for that, isn't it, dude? Well, from what I can gather, you've got a pretty strong circumstantial case against Tom Croydon. So my question is, why haven't you charged him with murder? Well, it's very simple, Greta. You see, we don't exactly have an airtight case. Yeah, look, none of us wants a murder charge. <laughs> well, it's clear what you want, but let's talk about the facts. From my reading of the file, you've got the evidence. Greta, not enough to make a case. No, no, there are a lot of gaps in key areas. An inquest would definitely be the way to go. Well, there's no point in launching an inquest if there's a murder charge in the offing. That's a very good point, actually. A very good point, because we don't want to interrupt the coroner's golf day. Yeah, thank you. Look, either way, I've got traumatised staff out there. They need a resolution. I'd like to go through this step by step. How many times do you have to go over the same ground? Until I'm satisfied. <laughs> Where do you want to start? Out of the scene. Sharp pulls her over there. Now, according to his statement, Senior Sergeant Croydon entered the house from the rear. That's where he found Ryan Decker with the gun. 
Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. And then he came to find you at the Christmas party. Isn't this all in the report, or...? Humor me. Oh, all right. Yes, he said he heard shots. I was running past the front of the house and someone took a couple of shots at me. He said you cuffed Decker to the chimney. I did. And the rifle was on that windowsill. It's not there now. No. She must be feeling what I thought. Is it time he shot at you? I'm wasting time doing that while we're still in the house. Tarly! Why don't you come out now before you get yourself in any deeper? Decker, tell her to put the gun down and come out before she gets you in any more trouble. You don't want to go down for attempted murder too, do you? Obviously. How the hell would she know where the gun was? What is this? Uh, you are? Helen Morris. My husband Frank and I own the trout farm. Uh, and do you live here? No, on the property next door. What's going on here? Yes. I came here to talk to Ryan. Look, I'm, uh... I'm sorry, but... Ryan Decker has been shot. Shot? Who? who why? Well, Did you hear anything unusual in the last hour? Unusual? Like what? Like gunshots. Gunshots? No, I've been home all afternoon. I didn't hear a thing. Now, here we are, two months later, and you haven't yet found the rifle. Well, from what I understand, they're still looking. How hard have you tried? What's that supposed to mean? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but if Senior Sergeant Croydon had shot Ryan Decker... He wouldn't want the rifle to be found. Oh, right, OK, so now it's a big cover up of a conspiracy theory, is it? Well, I don't believe anything is said. <laughs> this dog business sounds like pure fantasy. Didn't I read in the brief that he said he'd gone to the farm to confront Tony Baxter because she'd exhumed his dead dog? Yeah, that's right. Looks like Tony's capable of absolutely anything. What sort of lowlife's capable of doing something like. She's taken him away. Did you check the dog's grave? And? It was still buried there. And Senior Sergeant Croydon's explanation was that the Baxter girl had broken in again, taken his poor deceased dog away and reburied it. And you believed him again? Well, you met Tony Baxter, you would know that's a distinct possibility. Detective Hashem, you believed Senior Sergeant Croydon? No, I didn't believe him. I still believe Senior Sergeant Croydon killed Ryan Decker. What are you doing? What do you want me to do, lie? To that bloody thing, yes. He's capable of it. He's been off the rails for months. I asked you to look after him. What happened to that? What do you want me to do? Follow him home? Whatever it took, that's what I wanted you to do. Sorry to interrupt. Not a problem, Greta. Shall we continue? Listen, I don't mean to be rude, but this is a bloody circus. Get another hobby, will you? Sit down and read the bloody report. It's all in there. You conducted the interview with Senior Sergeant Croydon. I need to hear your account. Where's Tony Baxter? She could be halfway to Cairns, the way you lot are running this investigation. You were pretty gun now about Tony, weren't you? She killed my dog, dug him up and hung him from my kitchen light. Why would she do that? To lure me out to the farm. Well, the only problem with that story is your dog still didn't bury it in your backyard. And what did you do when you got to the trout farm? 
I've already been through all this. One more time. No, read my statement. I don't want to read your statement. I want you to tell me. You know what this looks like? It looks like you've taken care of Ryan Decker and maybe even Tani. Now, unless you set us straight, we're going to be forced to draw our own conclusions. Since when have I cared what you think? I'm just trying to help you, you silly old bugger. If you're going to charge me with something, do it. I thought not. I'm leaving. Well, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt until we found Tani Baxter. Well, for all we know, she could be in a ditch with a meat axe through her head. This Baxter thing's out of control. Yeah. Troy got squashed by his own car, then Tani goes missing, and her boyfriend cops a bullet in the head. Oh, mate, she'll turn up. But where and in what condition? Well, look, I'll get the troops onto it. I've tried all Tani's, mate, so I'll, uh, I'll try Decker's now. OK. Lenny Dysart. Who wants to know? I'm Constable O'Rourke, and this is Constable Peroni. You're a mate of Ryan Decker's. Hey, look, I don't know nothing about no dope plants, all right? We're looking for Tani Baxter. For who? Tani Baxter. Yeah, I haven't seen her. So you do know her? Maybe, a little bit. I think she might be uh, Ryan's chick. But she don't know nothing about no dope plants either, all right? Can you tell her we've got some news for her? Yeah, what? Oh, we have to tell Tani first. Yeah, if you tell me, well, then I can tell her for you. I mean, if I see her, of course. That's got a point. Lenny, I'm afraid there's been a bit of bad news. Uh, Ryan Deck has been murdered. Holy shit. It was he murdered? Mm hmm He was shot in the head. Look, she, she never said anything to me. Lenny, but... do you mind if we take a quick look around? Well, I said she ain't here, all right? Yeah, we heard you. We just don't believe you. Hello, Tani. Sorry, mate. What are the cops doing here? They want to kill me, no, Lenny. Come on, don't let's let go. them kill me. Don't let them kill me. Come on, just back off, you guys, all right? No, hey, no, no oh, don't shit. get away Listen. from me. Your mate Croydon tried to drown me. How do you expect us to believe that, dude? He's a maniac. He's not going to stop until my whole family is dead. Just, just stick to the facts. Is that door locked? I don't want him to sneak back in here and try and kill me again. Just tell us what happened. <sighs> he turned up at the trout farm. He had a gun. He was raving like a lunatic, saying he was going to kill us. Why? <sighs> How should I know why? Senior Sergeant Croydon says you defiled his dog digger. Well, he's lying. What happened when he got to the trout farm? I saw him force Ryan into the house. Lucky for me, he hadn't seen me, so I just I hid behind the shed and, and I waited. For how long? I don't know. A few minutes. And then he came he came back out. And what happened next time? <laughs> I made a run for it. But he chased me all the way to the trout ponds. And and I panicked because I can't swim, you know, and it was freezing cold and my hands were going numb. And I what did hardly... Senior Sergeant Croydon do? Well, the next thing I know, he's pushing my head under with his foot. Goodbye, Tani. I couldn't breathe. I was going to drown. So I just... I played dead. And obviously it worked because he went away. Oh, I were. How would I know? My head was under the water. What happened when he came up for air? I made it to the edge and I... I clung on and... that was when I heard the gunshot from inside the house. And that... was when I knew that he'd killed Ryan. And I... I saw him come back out of the house, get in his car, and leave. What did you do? Where'd you go? I got out of there. I went to Lenny's. I wasn't going to hang around and wait for him to come back for me. You've got to admit, it's possible, mate. Come off it. Pushing your head under with his foot. Nick, he hasn't been himself lately. Well, tell me about it. Uh, it's been even worse since Tani got back to town. Huh? A couple of days ago, I found him in a hotel in Melbourne. He was passed out in his own spew. Well, man's got to have a hobby. Come on, mate, we've all had our days. It doesn't mean he's gone and killed someone. You know, I don't know, I really don't. Go on, let's go. Where? He's not going to do anything to help himself, so we've got to go prove Tony's lying. So how are we going to do that? It's easy, mate. You want to see my shoes? If you don't mind. There you go. 
here. Oh, very fetching. Where are the other ones, man? What other ones? All of them. Have you ever thought about getting a shoe rack happening here, some sort of order system? I had no idea they were going to be scrutinised. Mate, you got more shoes than a Melbourne Marcos. Ready to talk? They're still wet. How did Tom Croydon explain the wet shoe? He didn't. He refused to talk. He said he couldn't remember how it got wet. Look, it doesn't sound good, but there could be a lot of explanations. Oh, there could be just one. Tani Baxter was telling the truth. Tom Croydon tried to drown it. Look, Tani is one thing, but Ryan Decker is another. And as I said before, we've got no evidence. Still, a wet shoe speaks volumes. It doesn't speak to Decker's death. Well, not directly, no. But it could establish the senior sergeant's state of mind. If he attempted to drown Tani Baxter, he was certainly capable of shooting Decker. There's no evidence of that. There's also no evidence that Tani Baxter shot her own boyfriend. Is that what anyone in this room really thinks happened? You all think he did it. Senior Detective Hashem was at least honest enough to admit it. I have to table my report with the coroner. And I think you should know I'm going to advise her to pursue Senior Sergeant Croydon vigorously. Good on you, Greta. You gotta do that. Luckily, the coroner isn't emotionally involved. Perhaps she'll get to the truth for you. I do understand it's hard when there's a friend involved. Oh, cheers, Greta. Thanks very much. PJ, what was she talking about? Does she think the boss is a murderer? Okay, well, let's lock it into this, okay? But didn't you tell her that she was wrong? No, PJ, come on. You're his friend, you've got to have faith. Don't you think I've tried, Kelly? To tell you the truth, I've tried my guts out. But I cannot ignore the facts anymore. Oh, no, PJ, come on. They can think what they like, but they don't know him like we do. You think this makes me happy? Look, everything is pointing to him. No, nah, see, I can't believe that. I mean, I know he's been a pain. He's been getting up my nose, but he's still the same man. Is he? You can't give up on him, PJ. Can I help you? You had better. And you are? Well, I'm actually bloody furious. Julian Whitelaw, SC. 54 Baronia. Street. And what can I do for you? My neighbour has just torched all of my bonsai. Bonsai trees? Yeah, trees. There was a Skydopodus verticillata in there. It cost me $11,000. Got a criminal damage by fire. Oh, I'll just get my folder. I'd rather send the uniforms out if that's all right with you. Sure, I'll just wrestle with the toner cartridge. Get me posted. Yeah, I'll take it. Suze? Evan, I'd like you to take Joss. Really? Mm-hmm. And Evan... Give him a bit of a go, okay? <laughs> so you say there were 19 bonsai trees? Worth $80,000. I'm sorry? I was about to build a Torii gate to my Shinto shrine. Torii, uh, T-O-R-Y? I, I. I, I. The timber just arrived from Japan. Kayaki beams, worth $17,000. Look at them! Now, um, Kayaki, that's C-E... No? Well, it's Japanese. You think it'll start with a C? Mm. Japanese elm, for your purposes. I am assuming you can spell elm. But right, so how many beams were there? 18. They cost me $17,000. Yes, you've already mentioned that. Oh, what the hell? What happened? My beams are ruined and the bonsai with it. So, who are you? Mac Greer, master builder. Mac was going to commence work on the Torii gate first thing in the morning. Uh, in the afternoon, I've got a job to finish up first. Yeah, well, morning, afternoon, midnight. It's an irrelevancy now. There isn't going to be any Torii gate. Not thanks to that loathsome old goat next door. But he did it. You make no mistake. All right.
that remind you of anybody? I donated that suit to the Opportunity Shop. Three days later, here it is. No law against putting up a scarecrow, is there? Is there a law against it? Well, not as far as I know. Right, then bugger off. There is a law against arson, O'Grady. Still banging on about your fire, are you? Look, Mr. Whitelaw believes that you're involved. Mr. Whitelaw's a wanker. You know what he done? He cut down two decent big Aussie gum trees just to put in his midget Jap garden. Plants. Midget plants for a midget brain. Right, that's it. Oh, I'll have you. Hey, 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 hey. That's enough. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, Come down the station. Hey. Okay, mate. You goodies. Can you tell us where you were this afternoon? I was at home. Where else? Were you alone? Except for the topless dancing girls. Of course I was bloody alone. Did you see anything unusual next door? Well, I thought I did see someone in the wanker's backyard. Can you describe them? Well, it's hard to see anything through the fence, and besides, I'm no nosy Parker. Whoever it was was uh, kind of shadowy. Shadowy? Well, like I said, I didn't get a good look. Then I smell the smoke. Well, did you ring the fires? Not in your life. The midget plants are going to go up in flames, I'm all for it. You ever seen them things? you got a tree the size of a cat. That ain't natural. Look, Mr O'Grady, I'm sure you can understand why Mr Whitelaw might suspect that you might have something to do with the fire. I don't give a rat's ass what that plummy voice pond suspects. I didn't do it. And I assume you don't mind us coming out and taking a look around? You assume wrong, son. You're not coming anywhere near my place unless you've got a bloody warrant. Lindy, just spoke to the fireys and they reckon an accelerant was definitely used, probably Caro. You could bet your life Percy's got some floating around in his back shed. Every old bloke's got Caro. Yeah, it was hypothetical anyway. He won't let us search. Well, in that case, Joss, you may have some time to help me tie back this list into leave. It's taking a bit longer than I thought. Hang on, what about this bonsai case? Well, it doesn't sound like there's anything you can do for the moment. Well, I thought we might explore another angle. What other angle? I reckon bonsai man might have done it himself. But torched his own plans. Why not? He might be after the insurance. He kept on crapping on about how much it'll cost him. I reckon you're barking up the wrong tree, mate. <laughs> the wrong tree. Look, Cute. look, all I'm saying is we should at least check out his movements. OK, get him in. I just had a call about an armed robbery at the video store. There were shots fired. Shots fired? Yeah. Kelly, you want to come? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I was over here dusting the nostalgia section when this guy came in with a gun. Can you describe him? He was wearing a balaclava, so I couldn't really see his face, but he was kind of heavy set. Heavy set. Well, fat. Anyway, he wanted me to open the till, but I refused at first. That's pretty courageous. Then he lost his temper. That's when he fired the shot. Just one? After that, I just did whatever he said. Where did he shoot? Here in Art House. It passed through all these videos. Look, see this hole in 2001? Mm -hmm. And it lodged in Picnic at Hanging Rock. I haven't touched it. I know it's evidence. Bag it. Um, is the security system working? Oh, it's switched on, but I can't access the equipment, sorry. It's locked away in a cupboard. Only Bryce says the boss has got the key, and he's not back until tomorrow. He got away with $584. Well, right. yes. None. We're lucky we got the bullet. We'll have the ballistics report first thing in the morning, if we can get the bullet there within two hours. OK, I'll take care of that. Thanks, Suze. How'd you go with Mr Bonsai? Well, he was in Melbourne when the fire started at a legal lunch with 93 witnesses. Which doesn't mean he didn't hire someone else to light the fire. Well, except he doesn't have a motive, because he never got round to adding the Bonsai or the Temple Gate to his insurance. Joss, I could still do with some help typing up this list of stolen goods. Can't we do it tomorrow? OK. You coming to the pub? No, there's something I need to take care of tonight. Oh, well, yeah, you don't have to give me a speech, just say no. So I'm not the only masochist. Well, go on, you might have better luck than me. See you.
Joss, you're on the inquest. Oh, do I have and to? Yes. I don't mind doing the inquest. All right, it's all yours. Um, Jonesy. Oh, wait, Sarge, this, this is the ballistics report from the video store robbery, and the bullet is from the same gun that killed Ryan Decker. You're kidding. See, I knew he didn't do it. He's off the hook. Yeah, just, just hang on a minute, will you? BJ, Amy, my office. Let's go through the implications. But this is great, because this means the boss didn't kill no. Ryan Decker. Hang on. Or at the risk of being shot down in flames, it means that he did kill Ryan Decker and now he's committed armed robbery. Well, oh, he wouldn't be so stupid. Amy's right. We've got to look at it from every angle. Now, what have we got? We've got a murder weapon that's turned up from a crime committed two months ago. We've got an inquest into that crime. In two hours' in, time. That's right. Mm. With the boss in the dock and everything pointing to him. Well, then we've got to find the rifle, because that's the only thing that's going to clear the boss. Get onto it. Quick, smart. We should get the divers to start dredging the river. It'll take weeks, even if we have a rough idea where the rifle was dumped. Well, what about start searching the tip? That's not enough time. Well, we have to do something, PJ. There's no point looking for the rifle. What else you got in the robber? Nothing so far. No prints, no ID. Well, get the robber, you get the rifle. Nick, yeah, easier said than done. Come on, look. Some fat bloke knocks over your local video shop for some small change. Get on a leap. Get a list of likelies happening. It must be something you missed. Yeah, well, there is a security video, but we haven't been able to put our hands on it yet. Why not? Cabinet's locked. That's why the Lord invented crowbars. Heavy set defender. It's not him. Yeah, I'm just saying. Look, if Tom was going to knock over anything, it'd be a pie shop. Left-handed? No. Film lover, obviously. Yeah, very discriminating one. Hey, uh, those DVDs on the counter, did you uh, pick them up? Yeah, well, we didn't know that you oh, touched them. They're still there, are they? Let's go. Oh, it's amateur hour, is it? Hey? Lindy, I'm thinking about this arson case. I think I might have missed something. What are you talking about? We looked everywhere. Well, it won't hurt to have another one. Go on, get going. Both of you. Well, I have never encountered such ineptitude. The arsonist is next door, but you're insisting on pursuing red herrings. I'm afraid we don't have enough evidence to charge Mr O'Grady. Well, why aren't you looking for some? Because you won't let us search without a warrant, sir. Oh, I don't believe this! Well, excuse me, Mr Whitelaw, if you just calm now, down, we can get on with our job. anyone else have access to your property while you're in the city? No. And I always keep the gate firmly locked. What about your builder? Except the builder. I had to give him a key so that he could oversee the delivery of the timber. That's ridiculous. Mac would never do anything like that. I happen to know that he loves his timber. He told me that he couldn't bear to see the kayaki beams left on the footpath. And these are the kayaki beams? Yeah, what's left of them. Uh, between us, Shinto, Shih Tzu, it's all Greek to me, but I was looking forward to working with such quality timber, that's for sure. Mr Whitelaw tells us that you organised the importation. I got it from the best timber merchant in Kiaki. It was beautiful stuff. Beautiful price tag as well. My word, 15 grand's worth. 15? Well, that's interesting because Mr Whitelaw tells us that it was 17,000. Yeah. Old bloke's got to make a living. Mr Greer, were you insured for the timber's loss? I'd be a mug if I wasn't. Right. It's just that the chart remains didn't actually look like it was Japanese elm to me. Anyway, we'll soon find out. We've sent it away for tests. I don't know why you're trying to pin this on me. Oh, look, it all makes sense. You pocket the $15,000 insurance, you stash the Japanese elm in your workshop, then you sell it on for a further profit of 30 grand. 32 with your markup. Now, that's not bad for a bit of heavy lifting, is it? I'm just trying to make a buck. Is that a crime? In this case, yes. Congratulations, Evan. Nice work. Uh, excuse me, I helped. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah. Hey, why don't you grab yourself a cuppa? What's that? Uh, did you want one? Yeah. Okay. Now, I need someone to type up a description of all the bonsai trees that were destroyed in the fire. Oh, we've got to get to make sure the spelling is right. Hey, what's with the power? They're dusting the videos from the robbery. 
Jeez, why do you leave this one? This is a great movie, this one. Yeah. You think? Damn, Buster's mate. So, Jesse, you'd love it, huh? Anything? I got a partial. Right. Well, we haven't got a lot of time to track down okay. that rifle. I'll get this to fingerprints of St. David's. Is there any way we can slow down the inquest? Yeah, I'll get my name to the coroner. Come on, get cracking. All right, I'm gone. Kelly? I know, I know the inquest. Charles, we'll give you a lift. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm not long now. You'll be right. Yeah, I know I will, because I'm innocent. Of course you are, mate. Of course you are. It's your word against Tony's. You'll be right. The first witness is Matthew Baxter. Mr Baxter, you're familiar with Senior Sergeant Croydon? Yeah, I know him. And you're convinced, are you not, that Senior Sergeant Croydon has some kind of vendetta against your family? Yeah, that's correct. He tried to kill my sister. Don't worry, Tani. Can't touch you now. Mr Baxter, please restrict your remarks to myself or the coroner. Yes. Were you in contact with your sister around the time of Ryan Decker's death? Yeah, Tani used to call me at the prison. And uh, what did she say to you, Mr Baxter? That Tom Croydon was out to get her. Well, she told me that he totaled her car, he tried to plant dope on Ryan. She was terrified. Whatever. And then she called me on the 18th of December last year. She was real upset. Told me that Tom Croydon had tried to drown her. I've got these from fingerprints in St David's. They find a match? You'll never guess. Surprise, surprise. Shall we? You say your dead dog was exhumed? You've read the inquest brief. Just answer the questions I put to you, Senior Sergeant. Your dog was exhumed. He was strung up over my kitchen table. So how do you explain that when you returned to the house with senior detective Hashem, there was no sign of the exhumed dog? She obviously got back before us, took him away. She wanted to make me look like a liar. Well, she being... Tani Baxter. He is a bloody liar. I never touched his mangy dog. He's Baxter. I've never even been near his house. So, Senior Sergeant Croydon, you're saying this young, slender girl here exhumed your dead dog and somehow managed to hang it in your house? With Ryan Decker's help. Why would they do that? To lure me out to the farm, to ambush me, and it worked. And what happened when you got to the trout farm? I parked my car a bit away from the house, went down through the bush, across a paddock. Tani was standing out the front of the house talking to Decker through the front window. He had a rifle. And what happened then? She moved away. I managed to get the drop on Decker. Handcuffed him to the flu. And where was Ms Baxter in all of this? I didn't see her again after that. I searched all over the farm, but I couldn't find her anywhere. So I went back to my car, and as I was driving past the front of the house, someone took a couple of shots at me. He's lying! He tried to kill me! Miss Baxter. He pushed my head under with his foot! Miss Baxter, you'll have your turn on the stand. But he's a murderer! I said that's enough. Why won't anybody listen to her? This bastard nearly killed her! I want these people removed from the court. Out. Well, oh, out now. But he's out. lying! Out. I'll adjourn for five minutes. You may step down. Sucks, you know, this stuff. I'm the victim! Yeah, he's a victim out. here. Plenty of dice, huh? Yeah, who's asking? We'll take it from here, Constable. I'm Senior Detective Hasher. This is Senior Detective Fox. You're under arrest for armed robbery. See this, Lenny? It's a warrant. Where are you going to find that rifle? See? I told you there was no rifle here, didn't I? And I didn't do no robbery, neither. Good on you, mate. You feel a bit nervous, are you, Lenny? No. Well, you always sweat this much, mate? I mean, could be a glandular problem. Now, my wife's a doctor. I know a bit about these things. But just get looked at, honestly. Well, Lenny, we got your fingerprints. And the missing DVDs. Hey, hey, I ain't never seen them before, all right? Oh, that's a beauty, that one. That's an absolute cracker, Lenny. PJ in here.
122 calibre rifle. Same used to kill Ryan Decker. Lenny, you stupid idiot! Bag it. I know nothing about Ryan's murder. Mate, just a little tip. If you're going to lie to us, at least keep it grammatical. Ryan and Tani and me were mates. That's it. She comes to my house that day. She's all soaking wet and, and she's all freaked out and stuff. That's all I know. You didn't find it suspicious that she had a gun? She didn't have no gun. Lenny. What? I'm telling the truth. I reckon Tani asked you to dispose of the gun and you stuck it behind the bookshelf instead. Uh, no way. Where'd you get it then? Go on, take your time. Or maybe you should even find a friend. Look, I told you before, I ain't saying nothing. Well, maybe he really doesn't know. It's doubtful. Ah, he's lying through his teeth. Well, Tani gave him the rifle. He's trying to protect her. Just heard back from the firearms registry. The rifle is owned by Frank Morris. Frank Morris, who owns a trap farm. Yes, I own a rifle. A twenty-two. That's right. Well, where is it? I don't know. It's missing. I kept it locked up in a cupboard, but now it's gone. For how long has it been gone? I don't really know. I hardly ever used it. Well, why didn't you report it missing? Because I didn't want to lose my shooter's license. Frank, we've got to go. Look, I've got to get my wife to the inquest. She's um, supposed to be given evidence. We're going to need you to come down the station. Yeah, but my evidence... Uh, Mrs Morris, if you'd like to just step out of the car, I'll take you to the inquest. Uh, well, I walked over to see Ryan about some trout farm business. Um, as soon as I got to the caretaker's cottage, I heard yelling. Uh, I was curious. Maybe I shouldn't have been. But I tried to hear what they were saying. Then I heard a shot. Well, I didn't know what to do. I hid. And then I saw Tom Croydon come from the cottage. He was carrying a rifle. My husband's rifle. Mrs. Morris, I'm going to ask you to step down. As much as I don't like to waste the court's time and resources, I think we need to abandon this inquest in favor of a murder investigation. I'm satisfied Thomas Croydon has a case to answer. And I'm directing Homicide to do what they should have done all along, which is pursue this line of inquiry to its logical conclusion. <laughs>